Welcome to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamel. Today we're going to go over how to export your BOM uh, once you finish your project because this is a critical thing. If you don't know, a BOM stands for Bill of Materials. That's an acronym there. And that basically lists all of the parts and all of the information about the parts so that you can go and either order those parts or and you can upload it to you know sites like DigiKey, Mouse, or Arrow, whatever. Or you can just use it as a reference point and uh, and you know, send it to someone else and say, here's the parts that I need. Maybe you're sending it out to a, a contract assembly, assembly house, and they need to know which parts you want to actually have on your board. Usually it's pairing up you know, your manufacturer part number, or MPN, with uh, the reference designator that you have on the board, so something like R1, R2, R3. So basically, it's, it's this document that allows you to order real components to stick down to the PCB. So whereas the KiCad files and the Gerbers that you generate are the, the design files that basically the circuit board assembler, the manufacturing house, uses to build the actual board. Then the bill of materials is used to figure out which parts you need to attach to that board. So let's take a look at how we actually generate this. This has changed a little bit in KiCad 5. OK, so we, uh, like I, in a previous video, we went over this. This is the, uh, the edit symbol field. So this is basically a built-in uh, bomb manager inside of KiCad. And like I said, I use this all the time. I think this is a great, a great way to, to edit components, and make sure your parts look good before you export. But once you're ready to export, there's a button right next to it called the Generate Bill of Materials button. And basically, this is a, a scripting engine that allows you to then go and uh, push out all of, the, all of the information that you have stored within a, a specific component. So if we mouse over and hit E on one of these components here, you see that there actually is information in here. And so things like reference, that's reference designator, the value of that part, that's what shows up on the schematic, the footprint that we end up using. The data sheet is usually a link. Um, MPN is the actual part number. That's a very specific part number that you're going to order. This is a link to go and buy it or uh, view information online. Value modifier, that's something like I usually put anything in here like DNP for do not, or sorry, uh, this would be like um, for capacitors. Sorry, population is DNP, so I'd put DNP down here. Um, uh, and then value modifier, something like um, I use that for like capacitors if they have a voltage rating. So um, 10, you know, a 10 volt capacitor, you're not going to want to mark that in the value field. Actually, let's just go to a capacitor here. So something like this, I might say uh, value 1 microfarad, 1 microfarad is the value, and then the value modifier might be something like 16 volt capacitor um, X7R. Those are, those are things that I might put into the value modifier so that I know specifically I want to have that type of component. OK, that all to say, uh, that stuff will show up in the bomb. So that's what we're trying to generate here. And this is a scripting, uh, this is a scripting plugin, basically, uh, or this is a scripting tool within KiCad that allows you to generate bombs. Now, this is the one that I normally use, so that's why it's here, Groups uh, BOM. Uh, and basically, that's going to push out everything uh, like we saw in the value modifier. I want to group everything by, uh, so all of the all of the values that are together, I want to have. So all of the one microfarad capacitors, I want to show if it's R1, R, sorry, C1, C7, C25. I want to have those all on one line here, and that's what this plugin is going to do. Now we can go and add other plugins. There are other plugins that are available here, and this is in the scripting folder, and then plugins, and then we see that there's a bunch of bombs that are in here. And you see that some of them are Python scripts, and some of them are XSL, and that is one of the things that changed from KiCad 5 to KiCad. So KiCad 4 to KiCad 5. Um, that is the scripting. XSL is kind of a style sheet thing. I'm not sure actually what that means. But it's a little bit easier and I think a little more accessible. So if you want to go and write a custom Python script, I think that's a little bit more accessible here. I think XSL is a little closer to like XML. And it's just a scripted version of XML. Uh, and so basically, in this case, we can go and run. So we can go uh, bomb CSV grouped by value with fp.python. So let's just go and add that in here. We can add that name. Uh, and you see here that basically it is. It's just a, 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 a command line thing. Basically, you're running Python. Here's the script itself. And then this is input and output. That's what it's basically doing here. So let's go and I'm just going to do the, the generate a bomb list. Let's go and generate this bomb, see how it looks. OK, and we see run command. So it did actually do it. And it put it in the folder that we're in here. So let me go and pull that up. I'm going to have to start up Libra. Uh, I use LibreOffice for everything here. So let's see. So it is just dos blink and put dot CSV. So that's good. OK. Dot CSV. There it is. 
And so I'm going to open up LibreOffice here. That is a, you know, it'll, it'll use Excel, it'll use whatever, uh, CSV, you know, you can use Sheets if you're on a Mac. Um, and so it's just kind of that generic import here. So it does have that header thing up here. So it looks like it's a pretty, well, that's pretty, oh, it's big because of the, the top one here. So we'll hit OK. Pull it into the window. Hopefully it doesn't crash. LibreOffice makes uh, KiCad look speedy. So. so it looks like this didn't actually group it. Oh, it did. Okay, so it, did, it grouped it down here, but it did also list it up top. And so that's something that's actually in the script. You see that this actually showed each one individually, but then it did go and it grouped it down here. And so this looks very similar to what we looked at in the, uh, in the other one here. So we have library part, footprint. This is what it kind of looked like otherwise. And now we have data sheet, links, and MPN. And so this is something where you know you still might have to modify it, especially if you want to rip off the headers, if you want to rip off the individual components. But this is a format that you can go and you could push this into you know, a distributor's website. You could, um, you could push this into another program. So this is really just kind of a, a transfer method to go between uh, the data method of KiCad and anything else. So like I said, we could go and we could also generate uh, other things here, bomb CSV group by pi. So let's try that one. We'll uh, let's see if we can. It might go try and write over this. Let me close this first. Let's hit generate. So this one actually didn't even add a dot CSV to the end. So that's good, but we'll have to actually add this dot CSV. So it's just called dots blink input here. So in Windows at least, it's saying I don't know what this is. So let's delete this old one. And then we'll actually edit this one, .csv. And let's try and import it now. It's the same thing's going to happen. Hopefully, LibreOffice is already loaded up at least. OK, and this is the import window. That's what this looks like. It looks pretty similar here. Um, OK. And we're loading, we're loading, and this is just a simpler version here. It also puts in the header, but the nice thing is if you wanted to, if you're like, hey, I just want this stuff, I don't want the header, I don't want any of this header information in here, you likely could go in and modify that um, modify that script so it doesn't do it. So that, uh, you know, I'm not much of a scripter myself. I, uh, <laughs> I'm a little more on the hardware than the software side, so I'm not usually, I'm usually using what's, what's available here. This is more than enough for any of the BOM uses that I need. Uh, if there's other stuff in there, I am confident that I could go and either ask for help on the KiCad forum to, to get a script made, or really just go in and modify it myself. So I think that's something that you should, should check out, and you can dig in under the hood and check out some of those Python scripts, make your own. And uh, the nice thing is that scripting engine, you can, you can always generate other scripts and, and probably not break anything. So that's a really nice thing. This is a great feature for KiCad 5.0. I'm really excited about the scripting in general. Uh, we're going to be having talks about KiCad 5.0 and scripting at KiCon, which is happening in April 2019, about two months from when this video is recorded. Uh, we will also be posting those online. And uh, I think it's just a really great, to make, great thing to make KiCad more extensible. You know, so there's a lot of software people coming into the hardware world. I think that that really enables things. And even for hardware people like myself, I think Python's friendly enough to, to really enable scripting and uh, you know, make it more extensible for if I'm really stuck, I can go and, and, and modify it and add a new feature as needed. So that's all for now. If you have other questions or if you need some help with your scripting, you can go over to the KiCad forum. That's forum.kicad.info. And we'll talk more about manufacturing and generating files for it over on contextualelectronics.com. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.